Hey, this is Max and in today's video I want to show you an overview of all the different whiteboarding tools out there or maybe to say it better um, the most prominent and most successful uh, whiteboarding tools that are out there. You might have noticed that Figma just a few months ago uh, released their own whiteboarding tool called FigGem and I think their goal is kind of to get all these Miro users who are also using Figma to get over to FigJam and not switch the apps all the time when they're running workshops or um, doing other things in these, in these kind of whiteboarding tools because obviously from the very principal perspective a whiteboarding tool is very similar to what Figma offers but with FigJam they offered a very um, boiled down version of that to offer exactly this and enable everyone to quickly perform these kind of um, brainstorming and interactive sessions but there are also many other tools out there um, so in this in this clip I'm including uh, Envision Freehand I'm including Mural I'm including the uh, Microsoft Teams feature for whiteboarding um, then obviously Miro and FigJam so it should provide you with a fairly um, good overview of what's currently available and what might be best suited for you. The clip you're about to see is taken from an online course that I released about FigJam. And just in case you're interested in these kinds of topics um, or the topic of UX design or research, um, I'm constantly publishing online courses on these topics and I will make sure to put at least one link down in the description box and in the comment section so that you can check them out. Um, these courses are hosted on Skillshare, uh, which is kind of like the Netflix for online courses. And when you follow my link, you will get one full month of Skillshare Premium for free, which is pretty sick because you can access the entire Skillshare um, offering uh, with courses about any topic really that you can think of. Also, I'm getting 10 bucks, so it's a win-win situation, which is fair. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the clip and let me know in the comments um, if you found that interesting, which tools did you prefer? which are you currently using and maybe what kind of um, other topics you're interested in so that I can better narrow down my uh, upcoming videos as well. So enjoy this overview of all these whiteboarding tools and see you in a bit. All right, now let's take a look at all the different and the most popular whiteboard software options which are currently available. And I would just like to show you um, the basic overview for all of these pieces of software and then at the end take a look at FigJam and kind of compare uh, to each other. So let's start with the first one which is called Envision Freehand. It's uh, been around for a few years now. Um, most of you might be familiar with Envision since they gained quite a popularity in the last years when they hired a lot of um, well-known designers and um, they made a lot of publicity for them obviously uh, then there was Envision Studio um, and Envision Freehand is still uh, around so uh, this is the the website and if we open up a new board um, the account is free by the way the first thing that we will see is a selection of templates so it's pretty much as Miro does it uh, with a very very um, comprehensive comp collection of different um, ideation and um, brainstorming and um, research templates which is very helpful obviously um, you are much quicker when you have all these um, templates at hand but also um, you can use it just as a huge whiteboard so um, these templates just provide you with elements that are placed on the canvas and you can pre uh, you can change the pre-filled text you can add images you can add forms it's just helpful to start off really um, and as i said you have the option to use it just as a regular whiteboard of course also with uh, collaborative uh, features so when you're in a team 
um, or you're hosting a workshop, you can use it uh, collectively. You have this uh, pen tool with different line widths. You have different colors. You can add text, you can add shapes, you can add images, you can add sticky notes. You can add, add a reaction to it. So for example, this smiley will then appear there sort of as a stamp and it will stay there and um, you can delete it obviously. But that's pretty much the overview for that. Um, you get an inf infinite uh, canvas that you can move around on. And um, I think because um, Envision Freehand has been around for so long, it's quite reliable. You won't um, experience so many bugs, I think. But um, I have stopped using Envision products since there came so many new tools out. And uh, I'm just really curious to try out these new tools so they kind of work their way into my workflow. Since we also didn't use the um, prototyping functionality of Envision, the core product of Envision anymore, um, there was not really a reason for us to stick with Envision or for me personally. All right, next up we have Mural. Mural um, is another whiteboarding tool. I think, I, to be honest, I don't know too much about the background of the tool, but I think it's one tool that does only this, only the whiteboarding. So not like Envision or Figma with a, a suite of different tools and the whiteboarding tool being one of them, but it's uh, their main focus as far as I know. Um, here you have the website and you can see that it's following the same pattern as most state-of-the-art whiteboarding tools do with um, collaboration features. It's web-based and um, you have the same aesthetic with the colorful names on the cursor. So it's, it's nothing really new. I'm not sure uh, what their USP is. Um, if we actually enter the app, um, we can see that it maybe is not that much focused on um, a pleasing visual experience. Not saying that it's horrible, but it, you can just, you, you notice the difference between this and the other tools. Um, once you start and create a new mural, as they call their projects, you can either select a blank one or um, start off with one of the templates. The difference between these templates and the templates and the other tools is that uh, once you selected one, um, you're not free to change or delete it. It will not become part of an artboard or of a, of a canvas, but it will become the canvas. And you can move around here, but you cannot delete anything. You can, of course, use it in, in a way um, in which you would enter content, add elements, but you cannot change the template as such. Um, I'm not sure, whoops, sorry. Um, I'm not sure here um, what the difference is between the templates that they offer and these frameworks that they also offer. Because for me, from, from a content perspective, they seem to be very similar. You have, again, these categories that you would know from project management or, or research or ideation. And you can use them and they will just be some sort of element that you can place on your canvas. But they're quite similar to the ones that they use as templates as well. So I could just use and place this uh, persona framework on this template here. And then I think I would be able to change much more of it and also delete it. Um, but this is really a bit confusing for me um, since they differentiate here between these different levels. Um, but other than that, let me just go back and create an empty mural, blank mural, and um, show you the basic tool set that you get here. It's again, sticky notes in which you can place text. Nothing too surprising shapes and uh, connectors of these shapes. Then icons, which you can use in order to visualize certain words. Frameworks that I just showed you, images that you can upload. 
and um, they have a content library in which you can save your own compositions into. So when you come up with an own framework, for example, you can just add it to your content library and use it. I think it's just, again, another word for template, but at the end of the day, all of these, all the frameworks, templates and content libraries are just templates. So that's the, bit, the confusing bit for me, that there are so much uh, categories for basically the same thing. And there's also a freehand pen tool with which, which you can draw. But other than that, it's pretty much the same or very similar to all of the other whiteboarding tools. Now, the third tool that I wanna talk about is the Microsoft whiteboarding tool. And it's part um, of Microsoft Teams, at least in my use case. Uh, and so since uh, the last year, um, it's Microsoft Teams has been in use quite heavily for me. And um, the whiteboarding tool is just one alternative to get, to get your ideas down to um, digital paper, if you will, um, very quickly in a meeting situation. You can access it from this uh, um, call window here by clicking on the share button and then you can access it down here. It says whiteboard and um, it's simply a white canvas. I just previously drew this here with my iPad and um, it's much more limited in comparison to the other whiteboarding tools. Um, there are obviously no templates available. There are forms and lines and this is just showing me that I'm muted but I'm talking um, there are sticky notes that you can add and um, different pens of course um, you won't see um, other cursors or other people so I'm currently logged in with my iPad as well and if I just take my pen and begin to draw something here it will just start to appear, but there will be no note. And um, in the same way as it's not visible on the iPad um, that the mouse cursor from the other user is moving. Now the next tool that I wanna show you is Miro. Uh, probably all of you should be familiar with it. At least if you saw my previous class on uh, conducting workshops with Miro, uh, I've been a heavy user of Miro up to now at least. And um, yeah, let me just quickly show you how it works. So um, this is kind of the basic setup. Uh, you can create new boards and um, yeah, of course provide them with a name. And then uh, you will end up with this um, empty canvas and a pop-up with all the different templates that are being offered. Um, this is similar to other tools that we just saw. Um, it's really um, sophisticated, I would say. Um, they offer different sets of, um, of templates uh, for different use cases and also from uh, different providers. So these are all provided by Miro. But um, as you scroll through the library, you will also see um, different um, templates hosted by the community. There's a lot of um, stuff from Atlassian or here you see um, templates provided by individual users. And um, you can also start with the empty canvas, as I said, and have all the different options. Um, they went really a long way to make this a workshop tool with features as the timer, um, voting functionality, all that stuff. And it's, it's, it's working quite well. So you can absolutely use it. They have these sticky notes, which um, are going the um, skirmophistic way and look like actual sticky notes, uh, which is, I don't know, I like it. Um, and it's really good for drawing diagrams. You can connect all the different pieces with each other. And um, yeah, I mean, if you wanna learn more about Miro, you can um, check out my other class on that topic. Um, it's working really nicely. And it has all the features that you could wish for. It's uh, web-based, it's collaborative. Um, you can see who the, who the other users are, where they currently are, what they're doing. And as I said, with the additional um, features in the pro mode as um, voting and uh, timers, it's really, really useful and you can totally 
uh, replace an in-person workshop, at, at least from the side of documentation and interactivity. Um, of course, not from the personal side, but um, they're doing their best. They even included this um, this video chat feature, feature here, so you don't need any other app but uh, Miro in order to communicate and stay in touch with each other. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the tool this class is all about, FigJam. And as you can see the website, even the website is interactive. Why? Because they can. And um, I mean, it's, as you can see here, they're explaining all the features. Um, it covers the basic needs and it does that very well. Um, we can also just switch over to the actual FigJam um, app. Here you can see the, the toolbar. I will go into detail on that um, in the next chapters, um, but just as an overview and some sort of uh, comparison, um, it's not as full blown as the competition is. For example, uh, Miro or Merle um, in terms of the availability of templates, for example, um, but it offers everything you need in order to map down your ideas and um, do that in a collaborative uh, way. Uh, let me just, whoops, messing around with the shortcuts here. Let me just try this one out. So here you can see all the connections work just as you would expect them to work. Um, and it's, it's super strongly connected to Figma. So um, my perception is that their primary goal is to get all those Figma users and Figma teams over to FigGen instead of them using another tool as Miro, for example. And I think chances are that most of the people will actually jump over to FigGen because it's so strongly connected to Figma and because it's so easy for them to move over and they don't have to uh, pay a license for another tool um, if they're using the Pro Mode, for example, and um, have all the availabilities. Also, FigGem is currently in beta, so I think chances are that um, there will be more features, more content available in the near future. So this is very, very early. It has been released yesterday, so we cannot expect a fully fledged and um, full blown application here at this moment. So that being said, I would like to close this chapter and in the next chapter talk about um, FigGem in detail. I'm going to talk about the disadvantages and I'm going to talk about the advantages and then we'll take a close look at the interface of FigJam. So see you in the next chapter. All right, I hope you like this comparison of all the different whiteboarding tools. I hope you got some sort of information from it. Maybe you want to try out some of the tools now. Um, as I said, let me know in the comments which of the tools you like best and which are you currently using as well. Um, if you like this video, then hit subscribe and the thumbs up button and I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos as well. Have a great day. Goodbye.